And you may family with this one, we can use the uh, table editor to modify the property of the links. So if this link is a short point, we can modify the property of the links <coughs> in such a way that uh, the truck cannot pass to the short point. And they need to find what is the second best route to connect between uh, origin and destination. And this is the uh, map that shows the example. If we have two short points here, uh, you can see that this is the, the red one here is the best route between uh, St. George and Salt Lake City. But after the short point destruction, we need to make a detour. And this detour may be cause a problem because you need to reroute to the state route. And the state route actually doesn't have the high capacity. If you reach to the high capacity, that tells you what is like, uh, they're going to have a delay and congestion. And somehow, if you think about the shipment, we need to arrive there in time, on time. But with this detour and uh, reroute, we may delay the shipment. So not only the connectivity, so we need to use that truck audit trip table that we developed to assign that to the transportation network. And you can see if we have a short point on I-15 intersect here, what's going to happen? The flow is going to be uh, using the state route here and the flow here. We need to, to see that there has a driver on the flow. So this say that uh, what is a frameful change in terms of the short point disruptions? And when we aggregate all of this impact on the connectivity and the frameful change, we can uh, summarize it in the sonar label. So we can see that if something happened for a particular area, what county, what area, or what zone that can cause a lot more problems? So you can see that different civil civility level in different counties in Utah. And the last one we want to show about the case study of the Utah. And the case study we use, here we use the short point, uh, we select the structurally deficient bridge. So this one uh, is the inventory database from the National Bridge Inventory, NBI. Okay, so they categorize the structurally deficiency bridge in uh, a full category, which is like the rating condition of the bridge of the superstructure, this substructure, and forward, less than full, because they go out, okay, and they do the uh, evaluation of the bridge, and they said, okay, this bridge is structurally deficient. So we use that NBI database to overlay the location of the sectoral division bridge in Utah. And you can see that we have about 220 bridge in Utah, in Utah that has structural divisions. And this is quite large numbers. And you can imagine that in Utah, we have a lot of problem on the right. So in the distance part system, we overlay the seismic map. Okay, and the seismic map and overlay on the on top of the deficient bridge. You can see that there's a lot of location that very vulnerable for the destruction. So we pick the location to generate the scenario and we come up with different scenario. One is the uh, rural interstate bridge. Because like <coughs> some of the area here, here, here. So we have a lot of problem because like in the rural interstate when the destruction happened you may not be able to find an alternative route. A lot of the time, you need to stop. The truck needs to stop, or may need to lead to a very long distance. But in the urban area, the interstate bridge here, the problem is a little bit different. You can find an alternative route, but because you have a lot of demand in the urban area. So the impact of this will be very different. And the last one, we combine all the bridge in different scenarios and see, okay, if we disrupt many bridge in the same time, what can happen? And this one, we just show, uh, this one is scenario A and C. As you can see, this is the uh, bridge 
in the Eagle, Eagle Canyon on I-70. And you can see the picture here. I got the picture from Google. And as you can see, the, here there is a crack ready. So imagine that if there has something happened here in, in this area, uh, the consequence would be very high. And the uh, scenario we see here is on I-15. This, I think it's in very rural area, in very rural area. And the result from this support system give us this table. You cannot see the number very clear here, but we try to color code it. The color code may give you more, make, uh, more sense because the green one, yellow one, and red one. Okay, so the red one here will represent uh, which origin and destination pair that has a problem. <coughs> okay, for example, like county A to county B. Okay, so county A may have a lot more problem. So this color represents the location that has a problem. So we can point out here. So for example, this one this is between this party to this party that has a problem about the body connectivity. And the problem, another problem is the fretboard pattern change. And this one you can see that there's uh, the truck trips between this and this, which is a true trip. This one you can imagine, this one is the Colorado and this one is Nevada. So a lot of truck trips that moving from Colorado uh, this direction we have a lot of problem if the, uh, the bridge around here is this road. Then you can find here. So the red one spread more when we have wonderful bridge disruptions. And you can see that a lot of red here so represent the severity when the disruption happens. So with this information, this one is for the frame code pattern change. Okay, with this information, decision makers can see where is the problem and how to address the problem. And if we want to, I think it's not only for the statewide uh, planner, but also for the local government MPO, and uh, to see, okay, if we want to prepare, strengthen the transportation network, where is the problem and how we're going to solve this problem or how we're going to prepare uh, mitigation of this problem. So, we bring to the conclusion here, what we achieved with this project is three things. Okay, the first thing we have developed the track only trip table, which is a demand, uh, especially for the Utah. But the most important thing is we have experience to develop the decision support system to that use mapping the GIS. And this mapping GIS can facilitate the user input and vulnerability assessment and the visualization of the outputs. And we developed the case study to demonstrate like, how the uh, capability of the distance support system in the map window and using the real highway network. So the complete report uh, already up there in the website uh, for details. So if you're interested for the details, uh, you